Dr. Crisp? Yes, sir. It's Research Friday again. Nice. Yeah, I, I think we've got a, a good one in the mix for today. I um, really enjoyed this one, to be honest. Dealing with some hips. Uh, dealing with some hippie hips, absolutely. Yeah, whether you want to follow along or check out the article in a little bit, you can do that at the link below. Hello. We should have a reference there for you. But today we're talking about the management of greater trochanteric pain. pain syndrome. And the great thing about this article, article is it is a systematic literature review. For those who don't know what that means, is it means that somebody went out there and got all the evidence and put it in one beautiful paper. Usually when they do that, you look at the back and it's probably close to 100 references. Um, yeah, this is through. about 71. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I like it because it takes all the info that's out there and they're very honest. What works, what doesn't work, and that's what this paper is about. Why are they even calling it greater trochanteric pain syndrome? It Doesn't it sound like all we did is we took <laughs> other diagnoses and we just came up with a new um, one? Yeah, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what all it right. is. Is because if you start to look at uh, hip pain or pain in the top of the hip, you know, you've got your bursitis, You've got your tendinopathies, you've got right. your gluteal tendinopathies, you've got your glute max, glute med, you've got your IT band tendinitis that we've already talked about in another video, yeah. um, and how to test that, and that was wrong. So, yeah, I mean, so it's just a big grouping. I mean, you're the anatomy guru. Um, when it comes to anatomy, uh, how many births they really sit around the greater trochanter? I was always told if they have pain and they point to the greater trochanter as bursitis. Uh, you have 20. So about 20 sitting around 20 there. 20 separate little pockets of fluid hanging around to where everything smoothly moves over everything. So in other words, with my palpation skills, good luck trying to identify all 20 of those. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, just to, just to be completely honest. All right. Yes, absolutely. So mm -hmm. unless there's the real redness, inflammation, and all those things, the yeah. likelihood of it being bursitis is a little bit less than what we thought. Yes, a true bursitis, yes, it's okay. going to be a lot so less. So now that makes sense mm -hmm. why they're trying to call it greater trochanteric pain mm -hmm. syndrome, yep. if it encompasses all those things. And when you really think about it, don't we just kind of manage some of those the same? Conservative care, if it fails, then you go on to injections or certain things with imaging. Yes, and, th and that's exactly what this article was talking about. It was talking about that the best treatment for a uh, retrochanteric or Trans, tro, yeah. greater, see, you can't even say the word, greater nope. trochanteric pain. We'll call is, it GTPS. GTPS, that sounds fancy. Yes. Um, you can, it's just conservative care. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and, and once again, you like anatomy. Mm -hmm. um, I try to like anatomy. I don't understand it as well <laughs> as you do. Um, what is, in reality, we always say, oh, it's your glutes, it's your glutes. Mm -hmm. We know those have big actions, mm -hmm. but didn't it talk about in here what the glutes really do? It does. It, it, I mean, it's on page 16 of it, and it says uh, the main function is to stabilize the head of the femur in the acetabulum. It's, it's that simple. We can talk about, you know, uh, glute extension or hip extension yeah. and abduction and external rotation and all that, but it's just to stabilize the head of the femur. So, kind of like the rotator cuff we used to always yep. give them hey go do concentrics all day long yes and sometimes we wondered why those rotator mm -hmm. cuffs didn't respond mm -hmm. that kind of makes me think we're dealing with something similar here where wait a minute i've always been giving my greater trochanteric problems concentric ex exercises yes and but they you mentioned tendinopathies tendinopathies and we already know that tendinopathies respond better with eccentrics yeah. Guess what they found in this? Let me guess. Take a guess. Eccentrics. Eccentrics, absolutely. In fact, it is the most usual treatment for tendinopathy, and it demonstrates that with this, it could good results with uh, patellar tendinopathy, Achilles tendinopathy, which we've already talked about. So any tendinopathy, you need to do eccentrics. So that makes a lot of that sense. That makes a lot now. of sense, especially if it's stabilizing the femur head in, you know, you just try to get it stronger. Yeah. Well, no, it's more of a stability motion. Okay. So it has to hold it in position. So I, I'm hoping you're gonna show us here some eccentric exercises. Ah, uh, yeah, and it's gonna be very- GTPS. Yeah, for the GTPS, and it's gonna be E-A-S-Y, easy. 
<laughs> very easy. <laughs> I like the spelling. Well, let's Absolutely. take a look at some of these exercises. Any All right, let's do it. Perfect. All right, so this is the one that we're going to be doing for uh, the glute med. Uh, or greater trochanteric, that was nice, <laughs> greater trochanteric pain syndrome. So once again, it's eccentric. So what does that mean? It means that you're going to set the leg on the outside, then you pull the tension across and slowly let the hip and knee come back in. Should be about a count of 10 or 15 seconds. Feel the burn? You can feel it out here. You know what that means. Weak butt. Yeah. All right, so let's do it again. Go out. Take the tension off. Means I don't have bursitis. I have GTPS. You got GTPS. Yeah, exactly. I'm Slow getting the shirt. Oh, but surely. I like the shirt. I have GTPS. That'll confuse people. It'll be awesome. Okay. <laughs> and then one more time. So let it off. And where most people are going to mess up is they're going to keep the tension and then they're going to go out. Don't do that. So just hold the tension and then let it off. So, I mean, I could do this really on my own if I really wanted Absolutely. to at my desk. But like you said, when I come back in, yep. I've got to so relax. You got to relax and take the tension off. Gotcha. Perfect. Hopefully, those were E-A-S-Y. Hey, they seem pretty E-A-S-Y. I like it. Not too bad. Not uh, too bad because the, the easier they are, the more the patient's going to do it. Yeah. And the more they're going to stick to their home exercise program, and the better results they're going to get. And as a provider, I don't think I don't have to think of new things for it. Yeah. All I have to do is think of, do I want to provide a concentric or an eccentric? Or I just take what I already know, yeah. and I actually take what needs to work for this, mm -hmm. and just prescribe it. And when we do that. What happens? Well, they get better. Yeah. And then guess what? We don't have to look at them, and they can enjoy their life. And yeah. that's the main thing. That's the main takeaway. Absolutely. So uh, you mentioned how much. Better? 90% uh, success rate. Can't go wrong with that. You cannot go, right, go wrong with that. So if they come in and you think it's a bursitis or you think it's a tendinopathy, if you do this exercise, it, according to this paper, it's going to get better. It's going to have a 90% success rate. Not bad. I love it. Very well. So if you want to take a look at the article, mm -hmm. go ahead and take a look at the link below. We thank you for tuning in to Research Friday. And we'll see you again. See you next Friday. Next Friday.